thank you and uh, welcome again. So, can everybody hear me? Am I all wired up properly? So, I will be telling you about the chips of software that we have developed at CSC. Um, I will be talking about workflows, as that's the topic of this session, but chips there is much more than a workflow engine. So, I will also be talking about other things, mainly from the user's point of view, but I will also be touching a little bit the admins and user support. <clears throat> so before we dive into this, just a little bit of background. I think you heard from Alexi Alio yesterday about our situation in Finland. So we are a national supercomputing center serving all the universities in Finland. So a lot of users who have very different levels in bioinformatics. So in one end we have big sequencing centers which are running their own pipelines. They have their own setups with light parts and whatever. And then in the other end of the spectrum, we have lots and lots of biologists, uh, medical people, who still want to do analysis themselves, but they, it's not their main sort of focus in their research. So they might be doing analysis maybe twice a year or something like that. And they simply don't have time, really, to learn to work on command line and use R and all that. So what I will be presenting is a software that we have developed in order to enable those people to do analysis. So I think most of you are fairly technical, so this might not appeal to you. This is really for the absolute end user, but bear with me. So uh, the whole point is to provide an easy access to analysis tools so that the person doesn't need to be able to program or, or use command line. Uh, the software is free. We are often confused with the commercial providers, but this is actually free open source software. Uh, what you can do is you can analyze data and integrate different data types, visualize data, uh, share both analysis sessions, but also workflows, which is the topic <coughs> here now. So this is the only slides really I have about technical aspects, but just to point out, so what we have is a client server system. Um, and which is uh, fairly easy to install. So the, the client is a Java desktop client, and the server is uh, available as a ready-to-run virtual machine. So Alexi will be talking about that more today. But so what I mean with ready-to-run is that it has uh, all the analysis tools, reference data, things like that. So this is what the user interface looks like. Uh, so we have the files, so here I have an analysis session. The same files that I listed here are shown here as boxes. So we call this a workflow view. And this is what the user <coughs> would use when he or she wants to save a workflow. So they don't explicitly construct the workflow first. They, they do analysis perhaps with a smaller data set to check that everything works as they want to. And then from this view, which shows the relationships of the file, uh, you can save the workflow. And as you can see, so the files are shown as boxes, and the boxes have different colors. Uh, the color depends on, on the category of the analysis tool that was used to create that particular file. So it just helps you to navigate a bit in this view here. Uh, so the analysis tools are here, they are put into categories because there are lots of them. Um, you can either just run them with default values or go to parameters and, and do your own thing. Shut up. Uh, and importantly, you can also view the source code. So lots of these tools are R scripts and we actually want to enable people to see what the tool is to. Not everybody is interested <coughs> in that, but those who are more bioinformatics oriented uh, typically want to check them. Uh, when the analysis is ready, you get the result file here as, as a new box, and then when you select it, you will see uh, information about it. So what parameter values did you use, and what different visualizations are available for that particular type of file. Uh, this is just a different example. Here we have an RNA-seq data set, uh, differential expression analysis. 
and here I have visualized the data and the differentially expressed genes here uh, as a bed file in a genome browser, so it has built in genome browser. Just a different view, so the genome browser allows you to look at things in different ways, so this is a bit more compact way of looking at things. And there are many different interactive visualizations. So what I mean with interactive is that you can typically change colors and things, but you can also <coughs> select genes and make new data sets based on those selections. Uh, they also talk with each other, so that if you select genes here, the same genes will be highlighted in the other visualizations. Uh, the system is tracking what the user does all the time, so you can uh, produce a history report which you can customize. And if you have an ultimately nasty reviewer when you're publishing a paper, you can also include the source code, the tool source code, to each of these analysis steps. So then to the workflows. Well, this is very simple. So let's say now that I would have done these analysis steps here, and I want to save this as a, as a workflow. So all I do is I select the beginning point of this, uh, and then in the menu I have this option, uh, save starting from selected, and that's all there is. So it creates a, a, a script, a text file, which I could then give to somebody else, which they can run it in their chip, for instance, or, or I can run it, of course, um, myself here. Uh, a little bit about analysis tools. So chip, uh, we started this long time ago, and first it was all about microarrays. Now it's increasingly about NGS data of different kinds. <coughs> and we have also included some um, sort of more traditional sequence analysis tools here. So then I have a number of slides discussing these different <coughs> NGS applications, but I will just jump through them very quickly. So the use of suspects for quality control and mapping, you can start them. Uh, for rna uh, differential expression pathway analysis. Uh, similar things to microRNA, but also retrieving target genes and doing pathways for uh, The exome genome stuff is, is very small. We haven't put much effort into that. And our problem is also that we cannot, we're actually not allowed to put GATK into Gipster because we are distributing it. I think that's a bit of an issue. Uh, for gypsy, you can look for motifs in the peaks, again, to that analysis as well. Um, <coughs> the total number uh, analysis is, is fairly comprehensive. This was done in Amsterdam Cancer Center, and the people there are really specialized in this, so that was very helpful for us. Okay, so then, quick word about how Chipster uh, works for the admins and user support people. So uh, it's fairly easy to install the server side because, uh, because, like I said, the virtual machine actually contains the tools and the data. And also the tool scripts have been actually tested with the tool versions, so usually they are compatible with what you get. Um, there is a, a graphical interface for the admin to, to do various things, so keeping an eye on who is running what. Uh, also monitoring of the different components, if they are up and running, uh, how much this is used, things like that. And then you can also manage those analyze components. So like if we want to put a new version online, we don't have to shut down the whole thing. Yeah, we can, uh, so we have several of these analyzers running. We can put down some of them or close them so that they don't take new shots and, and then put new ones on and then gradually move them. Adding new analysis tools is, is very easy. And then we have also built this integrated user support functionality. Mm -hmm. And this is very important for a place like us because we get a lot of user questions. Oh, my one didn't work. What did I do wrong? Can you please help? 
So now actually from the software, the user can send a support request. So it's like an email, it comes to us, and there is his or her message, but then underneath we get the error message. And we can also get, the user can choose if he wants to give us access to this data, and that often helps. So if we can open the session, the analysis session that the person was doing, it's much easier for us to figure out, to see what, what was it even wrong. Um, this is the admin GUI that I mentioned, so, so you can look at different things. Now I'm just looking at the job plot here. I have power to usernames, so you don't... I mean, I'm not exposing confidential information here. But yeah, so basically, so, and we can see how things are going. If there is a problem, we also get the error messages here, so we can actually spy on people if we want to. But usually we don't have time for that. Um, and otherwise, so yeah, so these were the other things I was mentioning earlier. So there is storage, monitoring the storage, uh, the services, and the, uh, adding new tools if you if if you want to add something that is not there. I think that's very easy. So the tool scripts can be R, Python, or Java. There is quite a simple syntax. So this is really the tool here based on which uh, the GUI component, the parameter window is created. You can write it by hand, but some people prefer to use this web-based tool editor. And so to finish with, I would like to acknowledge, uh, of course, all the developers, but also the users, because it has been super important for us to work closely with the users all the time to to understand what we can improve, uh, what they need, and things like that. So we have really got valuable feedback uh, from many people too as well. And so the map that is, is shown here is just showing the countries from where we have users on our chip to search So that's why Finland is lighting up here. But there are, of course, many chip to servers around the world, so the map would look different. Um, and finally, so if you want to have more information, uh, these are the places you can go to. So uh, there's the article, um, there's a tweet. And I also want to mention a Nordic collaboration that we did with uh, Mikhail Hus and some other people. So we, we wrote a book on our basic data analysis. It's it's mainly on command line tools and R and things like that, but there are also small sections on the too, so to help different kinds of users. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ian.